Happy Halloween, everybody, and welcome to Variant. Whether you're going trick-or-treating, heading to a party, or just staying home and watching scary movies, I hope you all have a safe and fun time tonight. However, with today being Halloween, sadly that means it's the end of Villains Month. But for your All Hallows Entertainment, you better believe we're closing out Villains Month on a high note by giving you guys the history of one of Marvel Comics' most loved characters, Loki, the God of Mischief. The modern version of Loki as we know today in Marvel Comics first appeared in Journey into Mystery issue 85 in October of 1962, although an earlier version of him appeared in the Marvel Comics Venus issue 6 title in August of 1949, where he looked completely different and was depicted as a member of the Olympian gods exiled to the underworld and called Loki the God of Evil. In any case, the Loki we now know was created by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Larry Liver. Like Thor, Loki isn't a completely original character as he's based on the Norse god Loki. But Lee, Kirby, and Libra adapted him for Marvel, making him the adopted son of Odin and brother to the god of thunder, Thor. But now that we know a little bit about his real world creation, let's take a look at his comic book origin. A very long time ago when the universe was still very young and Asgard was establishing its rule, Odin battled a ton of enemies in order to secure his rightful reign. However, one of these enemies was Lofi, King of the Giant Warriors, or as we would later come to know him, King of the Frost Giants, who are all blue and ice-like when they were redesigned many years later. Anyway, Odin fought Lofi one-on-one -on -one for a bit, but eventually Asgard's warriors would enter into battle with Lofi's hordes. However, at the end of the battle, Odin says, something lives within that bundle, open it, that I may behold its content. His soldier says, I hear a faint whimpering cry. Methinks, my lord, there is an infant child within. Odin then says, of course, it's Loki, son of Lofi, the child he kept hidden, for his heart was filled with shame that Loki was not born a giant as were the other offspring of Jotunheim. His soldier replies, Loki, the very name has a ring of evil, a tinge of foreboding to it. Then Odin finally says, like a boss, but still, he is a regal prince, son of a kingly father. I must accord him his rightful due. Hear me, legions of Asgard. From this moment hence, I proclaim Loki, son of Odin, half-brother to my well-beloved Thor. For better or worse, Loki is forevermore an immortal of Asgard. This I have proclaimed, so be it. Growing up, Loki would become jealous and inferior to his brother Thor. It also didn't help that Asgardians pride themselves on strength bravery and nobility, all of which Loki lacked. So he turned to magic and science becoming extremely well versed in the magical arts. Loki would often use his powers to cause mischief. For instance, like the time when he was a teen and he took three spiders then made them huge to attack Thor, Sif, and Balder. His love for mischief and pranks would only get worse as he became older. As an adult, he became one of the most powerful sorcerers in all of Asgard, and with his power, tried to use it to become the mightiest god alive. He would also become one of his brother Thor's greatest enemies, constantly trying to kill him and take his place as the next ruler of Asgard. Basically, he had a constant hunger for power and revenge, so he used his power to get what he wanted. This, of course, all led to him being referred to as Loki, God of Mischief. But that's his origin, so let's move on to story arcs. One of Loki's most prominent stories is easily in Avengers issue 1, as he is quite literally the reason Thor, Iron Man, Hulk, Ant-Man, and the Wasp form the Avengers. Basically what happens is, Loki is exiled to a barren island, where he's been ordered to stay there by Odin. But as Loki says, though my body may be in prison, none can stop my magic powers from roaming the universe in search of revenge. So he uses his thought projecting power to find Thor on Earth disguised as Dr. Donald Blake, and only by conquering Thor will he have his revenge. Searching the Earth for a diabolical scheme to employ, as he puts it, he finds Hulk and decides to use his powers to make Hulk believe that there's a bomb on a train track. Hulk believing there's a bomb on the train tracks then jumps on said tracks trying to get rid of it, but destroys the tracks in the process. He does save the train however, but the heroes will never know the truth, they will just be like, hey, the Hulk is destroying things once again. This inevitably causes Thor, Ant-Man, Wasp, and Iron Man to go after the Hulk but Thor quickly realizes it's actually his evil brother behind the whole thing. Long story short, the heroes team up to take down Loki and eventually trap him inside of an impenetrable tank, defeating the evil god. It was after this the five heroes decided to form the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. This would only be the first of many times Loki would face off against the Avengers, one of the next times being during the Axe of Vengeance story. In said story, Loki gathers a bunch of villains to team up against the Avengers, such as Doctor Doom, the Kingpin, Magneto, Wizard, the Mandarin, the Red Skull, and so on. He does this, of course, to get back at his brother Thor, mainly because of how bitter he is that he had inadvertently caused the formation of the Avengers. He then arranges it to have the villains fight different heroes than they normally would, 
like Avengers villain Gravitron fighting Spider-Man, Spider-Man villain Beetle fighting the Fantastic Four, etc. The reason for it is to put the heroes at a greater disadvantage, not being familiar with the villains. Loki got the villains to do this by being like, hey guys, this gives us a great chance to destroy them, but since he's Loki and is always up to something, he was also manipulating the villains by getting them to do his dirty work. But when Thor found out what his brother was doing, as he always does, he beat the crap out of him. At which point, as a last ditch effort, Loki took three sentinels and merged them creating the awesome Tri-Sentinel, which I've always been a fan of. Anyway, around the same time, Spider-Man gained the Unipower, becoming Captain Universe, aka Cosmic Spider-Man, and easily defeated the Tri-Sentinel. Okay, so the Thor Ragnarok comic storyline is of course the story that the third Thor movie was loosely based on. Emphasis on loosely. While Thor tried to prevent this as long as he could, inevitably, Ragnarok still happens. Thor eventually realized that Asgard itself was on a loop. Loki always attacked, Thor then saves the day, there's always death, then rebirth. It's a constant loop. So Thor was like, screw it, and accepted the destiny that Loki would eventually destroy Asgard by causing Ragnarok. But in accepting this, he could ensure that everyone in Asgard would at least die a warrior's death. But wait friends, it gets better. Thor thought to himself, if I'm gonna let all of Asgard die, I might as well get revenge on my evil brother, who just so happens to be my greatest enemy. So he tells Loki, you must be punished. You have taken the lives of many brave men, so your punishment shall be to become less than a man. And then literally pulls his head off his body, freaking decapitating Loki. And if that wasn't enough of a shock for you, it still gets better. He keeps Loki alive with his runes magic. Because by the way, Thor is Rune King Thor at this point. Anyway, Thor took his brother's head and tied it to his belt by his hair. Awesome, I know. Satur then unleashed his attack on Asgard, destroying it. As for Loki, what could he do? He was just a hanging head on his brother's belt. So he just sat there and watched as his ultimate goal of causing Ragnarok was carried out. But eventually he screamed in fear as he too was also destroyed during the attack. Looks like that backfired. Of course, like all Asgardians, Loki was reborn. However, he was reborn as a woman in Sif's body. Loki has also played a huge role in the Siege storyline, where he manipulated Osborn into leading an all-out assault on Asgard, which at this point in time was located within the United States. So Captain America gathered the Avengers to of course fight Osborn, but it is worth mentioning that the events of Siege is what led to the Marvel Comics introducing the Heroic Age. This is where all the heroes put aside their differences from the events of Civil War, Secret Invasion and so on, and banded together to fight evil. I will say however, in the Siege storyline, Loki was killed, but fear not, this is comic books, so no mainstay character stays dead for long. Loki was eventually brought back in Thor issue 622, which was renamed back to his original title name, Journey Into Mystery. In the title, Loki was brought back to life, but exists in a child's body now, and stayed this way for quite some time. In 2013, Kid Loki even became a main character in the second incarnation of the Young Avengers, at which point he tricked Wiccan into making him a teenager. And in Loki's solo series called Loki Agent of Asgard, writer Al Ewing made Loki bisexual and explores that a little bit in the series. He said, quote, Loki is bi and I'll be touching on that. He'll shift between genders occasionally as well, end quote. That's right, Loki can change his sex apparently. And like Ewing said, we see him do so in the series. Then in Loki's most recent solo series from 2016, Loki ran for President of the United States, which is a very interesting story, but ultimately he loses as all his tricks and schemes are uncovered by the media. And that, my friends, brings us to powers and abilities. As I mentioned earlier, Loki is the biological son of the King of the Frost Giants. Because of this, he has superhuman strength, speed, agility, stamina, reflexes, and durability. Loki is so strong, in fact, that he could lift 50 tons without using his magic abilities to make him stronger. This may be a shocker to some of you, as we rarely see Loki use his physical strength or bra going fist to fist with opponents. But he is well capable of overpowering super strong opponents, and could even strike with enough force to level a large building. He could actually fight for up to 24 hours before starting to feel tired, and has a pretty good healing factor. He's even strong enough to withstand a massive energy blast or falling from great heights and could survive in extreme temperatures and pressures. I'll also add he's immune to all human diseases and toxins. Then of course, most famously, Loki is skilled in sorcery. In fact, he is the most skilled magician in all of Asgard, if not all nine worlds. His magic comes from his ability to manipulate Asgardian energy as well as his vast knowledge of sorcery. And finally, he's such a skilled sorcerer, he could even grant superhuman abilities. For those of you who didn't know, he was actually the one who gave Absorbing Man his powers. With that said, his magic becomes slightly weaker on Earth as all Asgardians become a bit weaker on Earth. But now let's look at some reading recommendations. 
If you're looking to add some Loki reading recommendations to your Halloween plans, check out Avengers issue 1, the 2016 Loki series, Thor issues 80 through 85, Thor Son of Asgard, Marvel's Siege Event, Thor Trials of Loki, Loki Agent of Asgard, and Thor and Loki Blood Brothers. First up for Wednesday, October 31st, we have Daredevil issue 610. Determined to prove the Kingpin cheated his way into the mayor's office, Matt is pulling out all the stops. Here we have Spider Force issue 1. The deadliest task in all of spider Geddon has come up, and Kane Scarlet Spider has stepped forward for what he's sure will be a suicide mission. Now we have Batman's Secret Files issue 1. Dive into Batman's case histories and discover brand new stories by some of comics' most exciting talents. It's a must read for all Batman fans. Now we have Justice League Aquaman Drowned Earth Part 1. The Ocean Lords, ancient sea gods with a grudge against Aquaman and Wonder Woman, invade the Earth with an alien army and flood the globe. And finally, we have Heroes in Crisis issue 2. Suspected of murder, Booster Gold and Harley find themselves on the run from the super hospital called Sanctuary, with each thinking the other is the real killer. Finally, if you're digging our content, be sure to give that subscribe button a click. You could also follow us on our website, variantcomics.com, as well as Twitter, Facebook, and the Gram. Other than that, have a safe and happy Halloween, and I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.